Today we're going to start Noon Zion. Oh. What do you have? Oh, oh wow. This is Kedushin. But uh, it's the first volume. <laughs> we need the second volume. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they have the Spanish, but it's not, it's the wrong volume. <laughs> Mazel Tov. We had a great Oh, Mazel Tov. Where's the, uh, which, which film? Oh, the boss has a grand daughter. Beautiful. Has it, has it. There's a simple. And my son of law off to Israel now. Over the airport. Really? Wow. So it's called Tzav Yeah. Tzav yeah. Shmona means drop. Huh. Okay. Okay. We're going to start with Zion and Medeas, and we're holding by the sign. The sign. The sign. It's um, about 15 lines from the top. To that. We're talking about. Um, you want me to show you? There it is. You're going to listen? We're, we're talking about if someone marries a woman, she does a betrothal. And the, the the article of value that he's using, the thing that he's using to, to do the betrothal, like a ring, right? He gives his wife a ring. So, but what is he using this time? He's using the hair that's cut off from a nazir. A nazir is someone that takes a vow that he's never going to, he's not going to drink wine for 30 days. He's not going to become tummy. He's called a nazir. So after 30 days, he has to cut off the hair. It has to be burned. So he's not allowed to use that here. And this guy is using this here to marry a, a woman. It's called, it's Isuri Hana, things that are that are prohibited to you. So we know, and how do we know that it's Asur Bana that here? Damakra, the Pasuk says, Kadishia Gadol, Gadol Terasa Holy it should be, the wild hair, the hair of his head. Gidula Kadish, the hair should be holy, which means that it's prohibited to use for. For, uh, for personal use, for, for any benefit. If you're calling it holy, then that means you're calling it like a, like a kachim. Now, what happens by kachim? If you redeem it, then it goes out from being redeemed. So maybe we should say the same thing like this. It, it goes out from being redeemed, but the money becomes holy, right? When you redeem something, so there's an exchange there. So maybe we should say that it goes, it goes free up. Maybe we should say the same thing, that if you take this here and then you redeem it or you exchange it for money, we should say that the money now becomes holy just like the hair. The hair becomes not holy and the money becomes holy. Maybe we should say that. And the Mishnah doesn't say that, actually. The Mishnah clearly says that if you try to use the money of it, then it is a good marriage. So if you're going to compare it to Kachim, then you have a problem because it doesn't match perfectly. By Kachim, the, its exchange becomes holy. By the here, its exchange doesn't become holy. So the Gemara says, no, it's not a perfect comparison because Mi Karina and Kaidesh, is it say, does it say Kaidesh Ye Gadl Para? That it's holy? It says, no, it says Kadesh Karina. What's the difference, Kaidesh and Kadesh? Kaidesh is a participle. Yeah. Which means that it's either a, a noun or an adjective. Mm -hmm. Kadesh, it is. It is, right? Right. it is. It is holy. And kadesh is a definitive. Right. <laughs> kadesh is a either an infinitive, which means that it's a um, a verb that doesn't have any uh, beginning or end. It, is. It, it, it doesn't have any um, description. Or it's a uh, in, um, what's it's a, what's a, what's it? it's a uh, imperative. Doshie, he will be. Or it's a, a command, an imperative. 
but it, whatever the case is, it's it's less of a it's not a description. It's just saying kaddish. It is. It, it's um, or it should be. It should be. It should be kaddish. Okay, whatever the case is, it's different than the way it usually says it, so it's not going to be the same, uh, same, the same holiness. You know, like, um, let's say zahar has the same like zahar mm -hmm. as opposed to zahar. Sometimes it says zahar and sometimes it says zahar. Anyway. Um, yeah, it's called an infinitive. Infi Why is it called an infinitive? Because it doesn't have any um, any past, present, or future on it, and it as opposed to kaidish, which is a present usually, and it's also it doesn't have any. any um, it could have a gender, but it doesn't have <coughs> which person you're talking. To. First person. Like saying, you can move away from a place like Arsina, it was other people. Maybe. Maybe something like that. Maybe. Okay. Petachamar. Another thing is that if a person tries to marry a woman and in, instead of giving her a ring, he gives her a petachamar, he gives her the firstborn donkey. Now, name must be some like Reb Shimon. Let's say that our mission doesn't fit with Reb Shimon. Our mission says that such a marriage doesn't work because mm. the firstborn donkey is prohibited to have benefit from. But our, but it doesn't fit with our Mishnah because our Mishnah says the Tanya. First point donkey is prohibited to have benefits from. That's the words of Rabbi Yehuda. And um, Rab Shimon Mater, Rab Shimon says that it's permissible. See? So according to Rab Shimon, that would be a good marriage. Amish says it's not. Mishnah doesn't fit with Rab Shimon. Amr Rav Nachman, Amr Rabba Baravu. Rav Nachman says the name of his father in law, Rabba Baravu. He says, It could fit with Rab Shimon. Rav Shimon is always Rav Shimon Bayechai, because we're talking about after the neck was broken, but then everyone holds that it's prohibited. Ach Arifa, there's two things that you do Arifa to. You do the Egg Larufa, you do Arifa, and also by the Pet Hamar, if you don't redeem it from with a sheep, then you have to uh, break break the neck. The Kash says, why can't she redeem it? And I think the Teretz is, the Teretz has asked this before, but I think the Teretz that Teretz said was that she could redeem it with the sheep, but we're talking about that the sheep would be more expensive than the hamar. So, so then she'd be losing. What type of gift is that? Your day to water is Wednesday. Hamar has no value after. After the next one, it has no value. It can't. Uh, um, and even you can't even. Not only the meat is not kosher, but you can't even use it for a dog or for anything else because it becomes aser bana. That's what we're saying over here, and Reb Shimon would agree to that. So what he gave her as a gift is not a gift. Yeah. If he tries to give get her married with a um, a cheeseburger, with milk and meat that's cooked together. Okay. So we say, how do you know that this doesn't work? How do you know that uh, you can't marry a woman with a cheeseburger? Not talking about from McDonald's because that's not kosher meat, but we're talking about kosher meat with kosher meat with uh, kosher milk that's cooked together. Shaila, if um, if a uh, hot item, a hot burger with cheese on top, if that's considered bishul, it's it's a double yavish. It's uh, it's not so clear if it's bishul. Be that's mamish cooked in the path, you know, it's yeah, really so good. He gives her a bus or a hull of cold. Who's cold, that's Mutterbana, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, very good. Very good. But even in the, according to that opinion that the bottom cooks the top, even according to that, it not necessarily doesn't mean that it's actually cooked, that it would become prohibited. It maybe just means that it, that it transfers flavor. Right? There's a difference between cooked and transfer, transferring flavor. Okay, so the Tan of the Bey Rabbi Shmuel is taught in the Yeshiva Rabbi Shmuel, a very famous Gemara, Le Savashal Gadiba Chalivim, Megimopamim. It says three times, don't cook a kid in its mother's milk. One of them is Echadis Rachila. One is that you're not allowed to eat it. Echadis Rano. One is that you're not allowed to benefit from Echadis official, And one is that you're not allowed to cook it. The cooking itself is prohibited. Okay. 
can't go to um, a non-kosher uh, cooking school where they make you cook things. You would have difficulty even turning on the fire. Can you ask your friend to turn on the fire and try to get a good grade on that? I'm not sure. It could be, it could be uh, Hana. Oh, you get a good grade even, on that cooking. Can you even turn on the fire? No, you're not allowed to. Yeah, treif, but treif only means you're not allowed to eat it. Yeah, of course. It's milk and meat that's cooked together. But you're not allowed to turn on the fire. You're not allowed to tell someone to turn on the fire. You're not allowed to enjoy with the the, uh, the 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 food that was cooked. That's why you have you need a, a kosher symbol on uh, on, yeah, on pet food. Not allowed to cook for non Jews, why not? No. Why, why can't you cook for an Anja? Oh, you're talking about on a holiday. Yeah, it must be on a holiday. No. Okay. Mastis and Blake Yaitana. Our mister doesn't go with this, with this Tana, as we're going to see. The Tanya was started in a bright strip. Shimon Ben Yehuda, Aimer. It says over here, Shimon Ben Yehuda. But there's reason to believe that it's really Reb Shimon ben Yechai, as we'll see on the next page. But meanwhile, Reb Shimon ben Yehuda says, Basar b'chalav asar b'chila mutabana. Says that basar b'chalav, you're not allowed to eat it. Milk and meat. You're not allowed to eat milk and meat, but you're allowed to have benefit from. What does it mean benefit? You could give it to someone as a gift. You could feed it to your animal. You could sell it to a non-Jew or something. Shinema, as it says, Kiyam kadishat l'ashem alikech leisavashal gedli b'chalevi mai. It says, you're a holy nation to Hashem, your God. Don't cook a kid in his mother's milk. And afterwards, it says, you're a holy nation to me. This is talking about don't eat the um, non-kosher meat or meat that's that been an animal that was torn. It says, it says, you throw it to the dog. It means you're allowed to use it. You're allowed to have a no. You give it to the dog. Just like over there, you're allowed to have benefit from. So the Gemara is satisfied that our Mishnah does not fit with Rav Shimon ben Yehuda. Okay. Yeah, according to Rav Shimon ben Yehuda, that would yeah. be a good Kedushan. She has a dog, and uh, he's marrying uh, this woman, and he gives her uh, dog food as a Kedushan. <laughs> right. Uh, as a rose in one hand and, a, and dog food in the other. He didn't give her anything, right? Right. If there was a sacrifice, uh, not a sacrifice, usually in the Azara, the Azara is the base of Migdash, right? The courtyard of the base of Migdash. What do you do in the courtyard of the base of Migdash? You sacrifice animals, uh, you sacrifice sacrifices. But let's say you take a regular animal into the base of Migdash. That's a problem. It's, this, it's a similar problem to taking a carbon outside the base of Migdash and shafting it outside. That you're not allowed to do, and that's a very serious sin. That's even karis. But if you take a non-sacrifice and shecht it inside, that's also a problem. We'll see. You want to say is That's what we're saying now. Uh, that's what the Mishnah says. How do we know that? Rabbi Yechanan Mishum Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Yechanan says in the name of Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Yechanan has these teachings from generations earlier. It says like this. Amra Taira. The Taira says. My sacrifices, Shali, this, this is God talking. Shech mine in mine, in my house. That means in Lefnei Hashem, and the Pasuk says, Shech my sacrifices in my base and Mikdash. B'shalach, b'shalach, and Shech your animals in your cities, not in base and Mikdash. So, Ma Shali, b'shalach, just like if you Shech my sacrifice, Outside the base of Migdash in your cities, it's prohibited to have benefit from. Also, if you shech your private animals in my house in the base of Migdash, it's going to be Asr Bana. Umar says, one second. Maybe the same prohibition, just like sacrificing a, a sacrifice, a carbon outside the base of Migdash, is Karis, very serious punish, punishment. Gets cut off from the people, from the uh, from Hashem. <coughs> so too, sacrificing a 
uh, or not sacrificing, shefting an animal uh, of that's mundane inside the temple should also be karas. There is no karas there. So it doesn't work. The comparison is if you don't uh, have such a full comparison, then then how can you compare the two? When you shecht in my house, when you shecht my sacrifices outside my, outside my house in the cities, then it's karas. So therefore it's asurbana. But when you shecht your animals in my house, it's not karas. Maybe it's not asurbana. We try to do a comparison, just like shali b'shalach is asurbana, so to shalach b'shali should be asur. But now we said that, it's no, the, the punishment is much stronger over there. So maybe over there, it's us for Um So, one who's not hectic, so it wasn't consecrated. Correct. It was Otherwise, never it consecrated. Yeah. Otherwise, <coughs> it was hectic. It was hectic, then a carbon and then the answer is exactly where it belonged. So, El Amar Abai, Abai goes through another, um, another teaching. We're looking over here for the source that a sacrifice that's slaughtered in the temple not a sacrifice. A mundane animal that's slaughtered in the temple is asr bahana. You can't have any benefit from it. And if you use it to marry a woman, she, you didn't give her any any uh, anything of value. <clears throat> you tried to learn it from kachim that shechted outside the base of English. That doesn't work. So Abayah is going to introduce a new limud. It's going to take us till the top of the next page. <laughs> Yeah, right, just, just slaughter it. Still, it's us about now. Now, Abaya is going to learn this. First, we're going to learn that you're not allowed to share. Then we're going to learn that we're not allowed to eat it. And then you're going to learn that it's us about now. It's going to be a few steps over here. And we're going to try to learn it without the psukim, and then we're going to put the psukim into it. So, and on each one of these. Abaya says, we learn it from here. When it says by the sacrifices, it says, v'shachatu, v'shachataisai, v'shachataisai. It says three times. Plus a kra yaseri, We have three extra psukim when it comes to the sacrifices. Lafish and Namar. Okay, let me explain like this. When they were the Jewish people were in the desert, they weren't allowed to eat meat unless it was a sacrifice. So if you had an animal and you wanted to eat meat, so you had to bring it to the Mishkan and you had to shecht it in the Mishkan. It would be a carbon shlamim. The Kayan take some of it, the Mizbech take some of it, and you take the rest, and that's what the meat that you're allowed to eat. When they came to Eretz Yisrael, they're allowed to shecht wherever they want. You don't have to bring it. And not every piece of meat that you eat has to be from a carbon. You're, you're very far from Yerushalayim. You can shecht the animals wherever you want. That's the so, that when they came into Eretz Yisrael. You're allowed to shecht far away from the temple, but you're not allowed to shecht very close to the temple. You can't shecht your own animals inside the Azara. Okay. I only know because I'm doing here a contrast. When they were in the desert, they had to bring every potential animal that could be a sacrifice, they had to bring it to the Mishkan. So I would only know that when you go into Eretz Yisrael, that you, have to, you, that you don't have to bring every animal uh, as a carbon that you're allowed to shecht it, right? But you're not allowed to bring it to the Azara and shecht it. But that would only be the animals that would be eligible to be a carbon. But let's say it's a Balmum, where you're allowed to shecht in the desert, even outside the Mishkan. Maybe now you're allowed to shecht it in the Azara, right? Because we don't have, it's not perfect uh, um, contrast. So, um, how do you know an animal that had a defect that would not be a sacrifice anyway? Maybe you're allowed to slaughter it inside the Azara. So it says, um, because it's from the same species of animals. Okay, we'll see in a moment that that's not the conclusion. How do you know, even if it's an animal, a wild animal, what type of animals were brought as a carbon? You know, sheep and goats and, uh, and cattle, but not, but not the deer, right? Right, the, not the wild animals, buffaloes or giraffes. Or giraffes. Those weren't uh, sacrifices. So how do I know that those also are not allowed to be slaughtered inside the Azara? Well, it has the same slaughtering rules, just like an animal. So the same laws apply. What about birds? It doesn't say in the Torah clearly that you have to slaughter the birds. 
We know it from Halach Lameshim Yisina, but it doesn't say it clearly. Because I have these extra uh, verses in the Torah, so that teaches me Bali Mumim, it teaches me Chaya, um, and it also teaches me birds that they're not allowed to be slaughtered inside the Azara. Maybe you're not allowed to do it, but if you do it, you're allowed to eat it. You're only allowed to eat what you shaft outside the Azara, not what you shaft inside the Azara. Yeah, but that would be a sacrifice. We're talking about birds that are not a sacrifice in the Azara is problematic. That would not be that you're prohibited to eat any animal that's brought inside the Azara that wasn't a sacrifice. On top of <clears throat> I would only know that it's prohibited to eat if it had if it was eligible to be a sacrifice because it had no blemish. And how do we know that we also include a balmum as well if it had a blemish? We have to include a balmum because it's um it's the same type, just like we did before. It's a type of uh, same type of animal. How do you know also? A wild animal. Well, that that if you shech, which we know you're not allowed to shech already because it says b'shachat say, But how do I know that you're not allowed to eat it if you did it? If you shechted it in the azara, how do I know you can't eat the giraffe that was shechted in the azara? Its head is sticking out of the the wall. So marbani es tachaya she b'shchita kebehema. Uh, I include it as well because it also has shkita. When I'm the rabbi says, how do you know you're not allowed to eat the bird? I'm allowed to eat the bird. So we have these sukkim. All, all these were allowed. No, they were not allowed in the Mishkan. The only ones in the Mishkan were the ones that were sacrificed. Sacrifice. But to eat, you had to bring them um, as a sacrifice. Uh, a mum also? Not a mum. No. That's, that's where we're getting the conscience from. Any any animal that was eligible for a sacrifice needed to be brought as a sacrifice if you wanted to eat it. Anim, animals that weren't eligible, so so when I said that it, the only time you could eat meat would would have been a carbon when you're in the desert, it's not a, it's not accurate. Only time you could eat uh, meat from an animal that could be a carbon would be if it was a carbon. You could were allowed to eat those other meats um, from a bal, balmum not as long as not a trefa. Right, not during. In the desert, you were allowed to eat it. No, but a mum you can't you can't bring to the Mishkan because it's not right. a carbon. So that you were you would have been allowed to shech outside. Only things that were eligible to be a carbon you weren't allowed to shech. Uh, also, wasn't a blanket, so right. you can't eat meat. Right, right. It wasn't one hundred percent like that. Just the main animals you weren't allowed to unless you brought them. That's wrong. They had mana, but they, if they wanted to shech their own animals, then they could do it. They're, uh, they had they had the animals. That's why the people wanted the place to graze their, uh, you know, on the other side of the Jordan. They took that property. That animal. Why can we not bring the proof that uh, you're trying to say you can't shech them? People would say, yeah, you can shift them. Yeah. If if they do shrita and then they check the lungs, you know, like God kosher and find out, oh, there's a, a woman there, that's yeah. after the shrita. Right. So doesn't that <clears throat> prove you can right. show it something that has a moon if you didn't know about it? Yeah. So, you... so so there's two concepts. There's a moon and then there's a trefa. Trefa, uh, trefa would mean a hole in the lungs. Don't know. <clears throat> a mum could mean that it has a slit on the lip or on the eye, or it has some other. Which you should have seen before. Yeah, which right. yeah. Now a, a trefa would also be a mum, but it's much worse than that. A trefa is not kosher. A mum is just for a sacrifice. A trefa is not kosher. So you can't even eat trefa, no matter what. Like a black kosher chicken. Remember the story with the uh, the guy who kept asking his rebbe for a bracha for parnasa. So um, the rebbe would give him anyway. And he stopped asking. So he says, "What happened?" Like uh, he sees him later. But how can he stop asking? He said, "Well, I figured it all out. I have parnasa now." 
what do you do? He says, I bought a cow and uh, it's milk and I sell the milk. He said, yeah, but we're in the city. How do you, uh, there's no grass. Yeah, well, how do you, he says, oh, it's not a problem. I buy milk from the store. My cow drinks milk and then I milk it and I sell the milk. So he says, how much do you buy and how much does it give? He says, well, I buy a gallon and it gives a gallon. Says, That's not a business. He says, no, I buy Chalavakim, and I sell Chalav Yisrael. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> so far, we only got over here that you, that you can't shech, that you can't eat. How do we know also that you can't have hana? Because if you can have a nah, then it still would be a good marriage if you would give it to a woman. So Talmud Laima, maybe if you shecht, you could still throw it to the dogs, like Klavim. Talmud Laima, like it's only that trefa animal you sent, you sent to the dogs, and including in that is some other things that are similar to trefa. But I say at the mashlach, like Alviat mashlach, and Azara. But Chulan, mundane animals that are slaughtered in the Azara are not thrown to the dogs, which means that you're not allowed to have benefit from. So here we have, according to Abaya, Salimud for Chulin Shinishkutu Bazara, a regular animal that's slaughtered in the temple is not acceptable for any benefit. Ashkechinu Merav Mar Yehuda, Lerav Yosef, Lerav Shmuel, Bred Rabba Barbarachana. Mar Yehuda sees Rab Yosef and Rav Shmuel, the son of Rabba Barbarachana, Davikamia Pischu de Bey Rabba, that they're at the entrance to the yeshiva of Rabba, Amaluhu, and Mar Yehuda says to them, Tanya was taught in the Brisa, a Makadish Bepeta Hamar, but Basar Bechal Bechun Shishkutu Bazara, Reb Shimon Amir Makadeshes, Facham Amir Makadeshes. Reb Shimon says that the woman is married. But if you use a firstborn donkey, if you use Basar Bechal of milk and meat, if you use the sacrifice, Reb Shimon says it's good. Alma, Chulin, Shishkutu Bazara, the Reb Shimon of their Raisa. You see, Reb Shimon obviously holds that it's not a biblical prohibition. Veraminu, but one second. Rav Shimon, I am a chulin shneshchu bazar yisrefu v'chein shchayish shneshchu the bazar. Rav Shimon says that you have to burn it. Obviously, it is a biblical prohibition. What's going on? Ishtiku, they they don't know the answer. He's, they're stumped. So asal kami the rabba. They go inside the yeshiva and they go to rabba. Amalehu, he says to them, palga kuminichu. Oh, some uh, quarrelsome fellow set you up for this. He uh, is, uh, someone that's um, trying to cause trouble. Palga means like a machlekes person. What are we dealing with? You got the whole story wrong. Talking about that, they did shechita. And it turned out, when they opened up the animal, it turned out that the animal was a trefa. Reb Shimon Shimon follows his reasoning. That's according to the first opinion. Even though it wasn't a good shechita. But it's still considered that you shech did it in the Azara. But it wasn't a good shechita. But nevertheless, that's what you did a shechita. Rab Shimon Ma'atir Ba'anov Achacham Ma'isim. Rab Shimon says you can have enough because Rab Shimon holds that that shechita is nothing, and Rab the Chachamim say that it's prohibited because that shechita is something. Okay, now just one point that we skipped over is this: Rab Shimon said that if you marry a woman with Peter Hamar. Which turns out we had before in the Gemara Reb Shimon Mater, because we're talking about it was alive. After it was killed, Reb Shimon held that it was Aser. So that Bryce would be talking about that it's Mater. That was the view of Reb Shimon. Then we had a few over here, we said Bebasar Bechalov. Reb Shimon holds that it's that if you marry a woman with Bebasar Bechalov, she's married. And that would fit with the Reb Shimon Ben Yehuda that says it's Mutter Bahana, which that's why that was our source to say that it's Reb Shimon Ben Yehuda. Maybe it's really Reb Shimon ben Yehai. It was written R- Rashbi. Maybe it was switched, or maybe it was Reb Shimon ben Yehuda in the name of R- the Rashbi, right? Um, and then what we discussed over here was Chul and Shnishchut to Bazara. Even though Reb Shimon holds <coughs> that that's a Daraisa, but because over here it was a Trefa, so he would hold that it wasn't a good Shchita. As we'll see further, similar um, discussion. Yeah. What is because I'm reading the English. They mentioned the uh, the Kuda. The one that stuck yeah, is, that uh, came in. Uh, that came in because I, I I went through that quick. 
When it says like Kelev Tashlichon, I say Basar Basada Trefa Leisechelu. You can't eat the Basar Basada that went out. So included in that is a regular Trefa. Any animal that um, that uh, <coughs> it, it stuck its hand out and it was the mother was shechted and it was considered that, that it didn't get kosherized by the shechita of the mother. So that hand it looked just it, that part, just that part, just rest, the rest. The yeah. Rest. And including that were some other things also. What else was there? Um, um, yeah. Okay. Whatever. That's that's uh, included in that category. <clears throat> hey, now Machran Let's say they he sold the Petah um, Hamar. He found a, a buyer for the for the Petah Hamar. He found a buyer for the for the cheeseburger. He found a buyer for the Arla. Right? What, how do we start it? It was Arla or Klaya Karim or Sharon Iskal or Pari Mitzayir, but the hair of the Nazir. He found a buyer for it. And he takes the money, and that with that money he marries a woman. What happens now? Is that acceptable? With that money, you know, does the money become uh, also asurbana because that was the hana that he got from? That was the exchange. So um, it says mikudeshes. The money is fine, and she's 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 a married woman. Minolan, how do we know? It says like this: Mid the rachman because when it comes to idolatry, when it comes to an idol, whatever you exchange for it becomes also prohibited, just like the idol. Anything that you get from it, that comes from it, becomes like it, which means that if you sell uh, the, the Salem, right? I don't know if, it's, if that's Avedazara, but if uh, some uh, real Avedazara, you sell an Avedazara. So, um, <laughs> So if you sell a real Avedazara, so the money that you get from it also becomes prohibited. You can't use that money. You couldn't bring it as a sacrifice. Yeah, that's a special thing for sacrifice. And it has to do with the dog. Yeah. That, that doesn't mean that the animal you can't have benefit from. You just weren't supposed to bring a certain, an animal that something was done with it that wasn't appropriate, whatever, you went to have to bring it as a sacrifice. But, that, but it doesn't uh, mean that it becomes non-kosher. So that it's sheep or... Not fit for a sacrifice. So that sheep or your ox or whatever that you bring your dog for yeah. whatever you can't, you can't use it as a sacrifice. Right? You'd have to have like a... I don't know, that's... That's hocus pocus. That's the law. <laughs> you can do a kosher on all the <laughs> If you could check that. Oh, but I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. This way, there were two things. You weren't supposed to trade a, a, a sacrifice animal for a dog. You, know, you weren't supposed to use an animal that was used to pay a prostitute. You weren't supposed to use that as a sacrifice. Those are two. Uh, with, uh, and... Yeah, it's learned by in you know, the sacrifice laws, but it's not. It doesn't have to do with trade fill laws. You're allowed to check that and eat it. Okay. Um, so what we're learning now is that the money that's exchanged for all of these items is kosher. Why? Because it's only by Avedazara where it's a problem. Mechlal the kolesim shabatara sharu. By all other pro prohibi prohibitions in the Torah, it's mutter. Why don't we learn from Avedazara that it should be prohibited? The rule is like this. When you're looking for a precedent, that this would, this teaches me everything else. I have one source, and from that, everything else is compared to that. That's only if you only have one. But if you have two sources, then you can't learn from there. Why? Because if it would have been a precedent, you only needed one. Why do you have another one? Obviously, because it wasn't a precedent. So since by Avedazara, when you exchange something for an Avedazara, it becomes also prohibited. And also for Shemitah, when you exchange something with Shemitah produce, it also becomes Shemitah produce. In exchange for Shemitah, it takes on the same thing. So those are two presents, which means that everything else in the Torah is not like that. When you exchange it, it gets laundered. It gets uh, cleansed from the original prohibition. This is uh, that we said. What is it uh, by Shemitah? It says, 
it is the Yoivel, it's holy for you. Just like it's holy, just like something that's holy when you exchange it. The, what you exchange it for becomes holy because you redeemed it. Um, so too, Shvius, when you what you exchange it for becomes Shmita. The Gemara says one second. When you redeem something that's holy, it goes out and it becomes chulin, and the new item becomes holy. So maybe Shmita also the Shmita produce should be exchanged. The new item should become Shmita, and the old item, the original item, should now go out. It stays like that. Now, this is slightly confusing, but I'll tell you how it works. If you have a bunch of items um, that are uh, that are Shemitah, so I, let's say I have this. Uh, I have here, I have here, and I have something else. I have a bunch of items that are Shemitah. This is the original Shemitah item. So I exchange it for this. The rule is now they're both holy. Now I exchange this for this, right? They go like this. So now this actually becomes not holy. This remains holy, and this stays holy as originally. So the first one always stays holy. The second one becomes holy, but we'll lose the holiness to the next one. So the further exchanges do get exchanged, but the first one stays holy. So this is different than by Kachim. By Kachim, by, uh, when you exchange something, for you, it's being redeemed. Everything is being shifted. And if the first one becomes mundane and the next one becomes holy, it just keeps going like that, which is different by Shemitah. Shemitah has that stringency. You follow? Yeah. Okay. That's good. Hello? Yeah. Want to know why? Thinking, you know, please. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the holy Maybe. Uh, Something like that. <coughs> Same but, thing as but, uh, oh, that would have to do it. Um, <laughs> maybe. Let's see. It says over here, Kate said, how does this work? Let's see, you have fruits of Shemitah and you bought with it meat. That means you had, um, I don't know, apples or oranges that grew in Shemitah and you use it to buy meat. They have to be taken out by Shvius. Uh, that means that when there's a Shasa beer, and you have to, uh, when the, there's no produce left in the field, you have to take out the produce that you have in the house or whatever. Everything has to go out. Let's say you exchange the meat for fish. So, now the, the, the meat went out, but now the dogim has that rule. The dogim yayin, you exchange the fish for wine. Bad deal. The, uh, the fish went out, the wine went in. The yayin shemen, you exchange the wine for oil. That probably lasts longer. Yatsi yayin v'nech the shemen. So the um, the uh, wine went out and the oil goes in. So each one is getting exchanged. How does this work? The, the, la, the last one is shmita, has the rules of shmita. But the original produce always remains aser. Umar says, this whole Gemara that you just taught me, is malamdam only if it's according to the opinion that says two precedents you can't learn from, right? malamdam, but according to the opinion that says when you have two things you could still learn from it. Why don't we learn that everything should become prohibited, all the money, all the exchange, but all prohibitions in the Torah because we have precedents for that? It says mute We have verses in the Torah that exclude. It says over here it is cherem. That's by the by Abayi Zohar. Ksiv Hashem and over there it says Yoivel. It's Yoivel. He and Midachin Alai. It's only that, but not other things. So they learn from an exclusion, and the other opinion learns from because there's two precedents and you can't learn from two. Okay, new Mishnah. Yeah, new Mishnah. Hamakadish b'tshumei subemaisus matanas mechatas beifer chatas reizim akadeshas vafili Yisrael. If someone marries a woman, goes over to her and he says. I want to marry you with this truma, and he gives her truma. With this miser, he gives her miser. With this matanis. Now, matanis doesn't mean the parts of the sacrifice that are given to a kayan. This is the matanis, that are the gifts of every animal. Every time you slaughter an animal, you have to give something to the kayan. Follow? Every, every, literally, every animal that's slaughtered, the, the kayan gets one piece of that animal, the zraya, the cheek, and the arm, and the, also the teva, which is the rennet. 
which is uh, part of the animal that's used as rennet, which is the, the, the inner inner part of the animal, the caber. That's uh, the Kayanim would have big cheese uh, markets, Tanuva. Even a regular farmer. By the by the uh, um, by a sacrifice, a kain gets the the chest and the leg. This he gets the arm, the cheek, and the uh, and the kaba, which is a part of the piece of the stomach. So he gets the before it rots. Before it rots, right? But they were slaughtered. You know, the kain might have lived around in different areas. They were big freezers. Rhode Island Ice Company. Did you say that the gifts oh, were referring to those three things? Yeah. 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 I you can't go to partnership with the company. Mm, I, has a large part. Um, possibly, yes. Possibly, yes. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Let's take a look. I mean, well, let's see what's going on here, but that would be interesting. Yeah. Uh, mechatas. Uh, also, if he sells her, if he not sells her, if he gives her the water of the paraduma, or the ashes of the paraduma, this is a good marriage. I feel Yisrael, even if the person that gave it to her wasn't a Kayan, it was a Yisrael. And he has Shuma that he has to give to the Kayan. And what we're thinking now is that he's saying, look, I was going to give it to my brother-in-law, that's a Kayan. But if you want, you can give it to your nephew or whatever, that's a Kayan. Or your, uh, your... Well, if it's Shuma, she would have to give it to the Kayan. But let's say he's saying, look, just you can't eat it. He's telling her, you can't eat it because you're not a, you're not a Kayan, a Kayanus. But um, but you can the rights that you have to whichever you want to give it to, that's good. It's like giving someone tzedakah money. You know, Which, I was gonna give it to tzedakah, but you can give it to your organization if you want. What's that no? The, the no is that I have an organization that I like and I would have liked to give it to them. It's called Teva Sana. We're thinking now that Teva Sana is mom and he's giving her the right. You know, um, he's telling her that uh, she can bid an aliyah for her, her wherever she wants and she'll, you know, with that money. <laughs> so, what if she owns money to repay? Oh, that's interesting. I'm not sure if you can pay back loans with Shuma. I'm not sure if that works like that. Okay. Again, just because we're discussing the Yisrael, right? That would be a different story. Over there, that's what we're thinking right now. Now, ultimately, we're, we're going to change it a little bit, but that's what we're thinking right now. Amar Ula, Ula says, "Tavas anayin amamun." This is a, a provocative statement. He says that the ability to uh, to give to uh, as a gift that's not that has not considered value. Even a Yisrael, it's considered that they're married, which means that it is money. The ability to give it has value. We're talking about over here. The Gemara gives a, a slightly complicated case. You could have done it much different. We're talking about that we have a Yisrael that has, that has Tevel. Tevel means produce that the truma wasn't removed. It still has a truma. You know what truma is? Truma is the gift that you have to give to the Kohen. 2%. Out of every 50, you have to give one to the Kohen. You grow grain, you give 1%, one, uh, uh, 2%, 2 out of 100 to the Kohen. That's truma. So here we're talking about where he has 100. And he dies. We're talking about a, a, a Kohen. And he dies. The truma was never taken out, but because he's a Kayan, it's as if it was taken out because he's a Kayan himself. It died, he passed away while it was in his possession. It's as if it was removed. Now, who inherits it? His daughter's son, who's a Yisrael. So, now, if it's a, if truma is in the hands of a Kayan, so then it doesn't need to be re-given if it ends up in the hands of a Yisrael. It doesn't need to give it back to the Kayan. The Yisrael can sell it on the Truma market to any Kayan that he wants to. When does he have to give it? That's before it was given once. He has to give it to a Kayan. That would be Taiva the, the rights that he has to give it to someone. 
does it have value or not? But Ula explains it, that here we're not talking about that it wasn't given yet. It was already considered given. And now it could be sold on the Truma market, so it has actual value. It doesn't have value as full, and <coughs> because you have a lesser, uh, um, you know, demand. Lesser, lesser demand, but you still have, uh, still is a market, for the Cayenne market. Okay. <clears throat> There was a city in um, in Morocco that was just Kayanim. I forget which city it was. <coughs> Not Mithnes. One of one of the cities in Morocco. It was known that was uh, the mm. whole city was Kayanim. Okay. Why Rav Chia Barav Mir Rav Huna? Rav Chia Barav and asks Rav Huna a question. Rav Huna was a great teacher. Was a student of Rav. The ability to give the gift of the kayin, is that considered value or not value? We have a Mishnah. very good. Where did you learn it? Sure, you it yeah. Very good. So we have a proof Shh. that it is considered Tavis and Amma Level of Kim, the Israel Snuffle Tal and Base of Yimakayan. One second. That's not talking about Tavis and Amma. We just explained, Ula explained that it's uh, that that's talking about where he already owns the Truma and he could sell it for resale. Amma Lay. Haitzat. That means like you're removed from this. Ichsif, so Rabbi Baravan gets embarrassed. Who suffered Mishmaiti Kamali is saying that you're not a Talmud Chacham. You don't, uh, you don't know what you're saying over here. I'm a lay. So Rafuna tells him, that's not what I meant. Don't get to uh, feel bad. Hachi Kamina. What I meant was Ravasi de Hutzel Koi Kavasa. You're a Hutza. That means you're similar to Rav Asi that came from the city of Hutzel that, um, <laughs> that he held exactly the way you held. Name a Ketanai. Let's say that there's machlekes tanoim. There's a machlekes well, from in between sages of the Mishnah. If the ability to give to whoever you want is that considered value, is that considered money? Yeah. The ability that you can give the gift to the coin, whichever coin you, whoever you want to choose, you can give it. Does that is that considered value? <clears throat> it goes like this: Agoyin tivli shel chaveri. Someone steals tevel produce that was not fixed, that the, te- the truma wasn't removed. He steals it from his friend. Mishalim, the, the mate tevli shel chaveri, has to pay back the whole value. Included in that is the truma that's there. He has to pay for the truma as well. Divri Rebbe, that's the words of Rebbe. Rabbi Yehuda, which is Rabbi Yehuda, 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 which is Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda's son, he says that you only have to pay for the regular mundane food. You don't have to pay for the truma. My love, but obviously, this is what they're arguing about. Marsava Rebbe holds Tavis and Amaman. He had the ability to give the Truma to whoever he wanted, and you took that ability from me. You have to pay for it. Marsava Tavis and Amaman, and Rebbe Shabbat says it's not. Lie, the Gemara says that's not the Mach like this. Kuli Alma Tavis and Amaman, everyone holds that Tavis and is not Maman. That uh, that ability to give <laughs> does, uh, is not considered value. If the Kayan had produce, but he didn't remove the Truma, is it considered like it's removed or not? So, Rebbe held that it was as if it's removed, and therefore it belongs to him. And, and so, therefore, um, when it's stolen, he has to pay it back to him because he could have resold it. Another opinion holds it's not considered like it was removed, and therefore he can't resell it, he has to give it. We can explain this uh, another way. Everyone holds it as if it's removed. And is, is not considered money, that ability to give. But if it's removed. But we're arguing here about Shmuel. Shmuel held that if you tell the person, the thief, this is what happens. You come to the thief. You say, you stole my uh, my produce. So um, uh, you owe me all the money. So he said, the guy says, well, I'll pay you uh, for most of it. But the part that has to go to the Kayan, I'm, I'll deal with the Kayan on my own. So Shmuel says that the guy could tell him, 
Um, I'm, don't worry about that because I already did it paid the Kayan with, with just one kernel. Me, meanwhile, you give me all the rest. Shmuel holds that one chita, one kernel of wheat could exempt an entire silo. Now, you're not supposed to, there's supposed to be 2%, Shuma. But if you want, Midai Raisa, Shmuel says you can get out of it by just doing one piece of grain. That way you can get all your money back. So Mari Isle the Shmuel, Rebbe held that he can claim all his money from the thief. Because he says uh, holds like shmol. And Marlesley the shmol. And Rabbi Rabbi this says that you can't claim your money from the thief because he doesn't hold the shmol. He says you're gonna have to give the actual two percent. If you want, you could say the kolyam lesson the shmol. No, no one holds the shmol. But no time at the Rebbe, the Rebbe because the consider Rabban on the ganav. Rebbe's reason is just that the rabbis didn't want the ganav to win because chaytiniska, what he steals produce, claims that he's gonna give it to the kayan and then he doesn't have to pay it for, but he stole. So we say, no, you have to pay everything. If by the same way, we could go the opposite. We could say, the Kulayam is the Shmuel, everyone holds the Shmuel. Vachan Tam der Bish Bar Yehuda, Katsina Rabban Alabala Bayas, Lay by Lashui Lativli. This is very interesting. They they put a fine on the owner because why did you leave your produce without with un, uh, unfixed, without taking the Shuma? So therefore, you don't get it back. You should have fixed it earlier. Tanana was taught in the Mishnah. Makadish Shum is my Samatan is Mechatas Bay for Para, Racing Makadesh, as Afi of Afal P Yisra of Afal P. No, Bafila Yisrael. And even if it's a Yisrael, even if it's a Yisrael that's marrying this woman and he's giving her all of these items. That's Afal. Yeah, I, I, I'm adjusting it. There's my, many, many cases that people don't know. Right. The question is is that considered value that someone would actually pay for that? I mean, Yes, right. I would say yes. Right. In that case, why? Yeah. So, so what is the machlekes? Is Tevisan or not? If we know that people would would pay money to be able to give to whichever kind they want to, right? Or the kind would give them a benefit from giving them specifically just getting access to basic English to certain parts of basic English. Right. So I'm ready. I know. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I guess they're asking uh, the average person would the, would, he, would, he, would he pay money would he pay a, sh- a pruta to, to be able to, to give it like that I mean this girl wanted to go to the basement that she never was able to go gives her right. that, so she could go that's already enough yeah well, the question is would the average person um, pay a pruta to be able to have that sort of Ability to be able to give to which so really yeah are we talking I think the question would be what would the average person do that's like this. the question on spending how people spend right. their money would you pay money to be able to be the one that's going to give the gift for a minute and get the plaque we're going to ask and get that's the right. plaque uh, yeah. uh, the um the, there's a contradiction it says an ladon <coughs> someone takes payment as a, to do judgment Dean of Betelim, his judgment is, is nullified. Lahayat, if he takes money to testify, he does a betela. Lahazis lakadish, if he takes money to sprinkle the water of the paraduma on, onto someone, so meim of meimara ve'efra ve'efra mikla. The water that he got sprinkled on him was really just cave water, and the, the ashes was really just ashes from a burnt uh, from the kitchen. It, was, it doesn't help. You're not allowed to take money for these things. Now, the cash is that why are we saying that this woman is married when she gets this um, this water or this mechatas? It shouldn't be anything. It should be just, not, it shouldn't even be a shavu pruta. It's, it's worthless. Over there, he said, "I'll go with this. I'll go fill up the bucket for you. I'll go mix it in." Over here, he's saying, "I'll sprinkle it on you if you marry me." Mm. So the sprinkling itself, that you're not allowed to take a payment for, but the filling it up and the mixing it in and that those other preparatory parts of this that you are allowed to take. They can I'll prove it to you that that's what's talking about. The tani over here it says, Over here it says, the water. Of the of the paraduma and the ashes of the paraduma, it says them separately. That obviously means that they weren't mixed yet. Oktani hasam, but over there it says lahazis that he's sprinkling it on them. 
So that is already, that means that a Bedeiria was for the action of sprinkling. You see from this that that's a good terrace that Abai is saying. Hajjan Lachish Mekadish, this is the end of the second parak. Okay. So we all like, is that the halacha about Tavasana? Tavasana in Imam Yid. Not the way you, you said. They got to figure out why. Otherwise, you wouldn't build any institutions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.